I'm going to explain one of the most important mental models that has contributed to my trading performance over the years. And I'll go through a few practical examples to help you start using it to improve your own trading as well. Trading is a complex skill and it calls for a lot of difficult decision making in situations involving a lot of uncertainty. So this means we need to choose what to do in the face of problems that have no clear and definitive answer. And to make matters even worse, these decisions often have money riding on them, which makes there be even more obstacles for clear thinking. Therefore, being able to think better will mean that you can trade better. And this is something we can learn about and practice doing. The problem is most traders either don't bother learning to think better or they rely on the same old so-called trading wisdom that's been passed on for decades from trader to trader and sounds good, but is actually useless. So instead, if we want to think better, we shouldn't just rely on things that have come from trading. We can take mental models and techniques that have proven to work from other fields and other people. Why reinvent the wheel when someone's already done that work for us? You could try merging Newton's equations with your own. Oh, yeah, yeah, good idea, yeah. yeah. I mean, or I could just shit all over the blackboard. Huh? So with that in mind, here's a quote from one of the biggest advocates for mental models. That's Charlie Munger, vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway. He says, invert, always invert. Turn a situation or problem upside down. Look at it backwards. What would happen if all our plans went wrong? Where don't we want to go and how do you get there? Instead of looking for success, make a list of how to fail instead. Tell me where I'm going to die, that is so I don't go there. What he's talking about is what I believe is one of the most important mental models for traders, inversion. This mental model helps us solve difficult problems or situations where it isn't clear what the outcome or solution should be. We do it by thinking about what the solution wouldn't be or what would stop the right outcome from occurring. We're essentially trying to answer the opposite of what we're really trying to solve by thinking about all the possible negative aspects and then in doing so, we're getting closer to having a description of the right answer or the solution. Now, there are many ways that this applies to trading, so let's go through some examples. And make sure you stay until the end because the last example is a really important one that I always recommend to our members. And just before we go through those, if you are finding this helpful or interesting, you could invert the like button just by clicking on it and that will help our channel reach more traders and keep on growing. So let's start with a simple example. It might be that you want to figure out how you could succeed at trading. So using the inversion method, you might start by asking yourself, if you were going to fail at trading, what factors would cause that failure? Lack of preparation for each trading session, not having a system, not having tested the system to check that it actually works, not paying attention to your risk management, being tired and having low energy during your trading sessions, and so on. Now, if you flip all of those things around to the positive versions of them, you'll now have a list of things that you need to do to succeed because you know that by not doing those things, it's going to lead to failure. Human beings should do the same thing in the ordinary walks of life. It's constantly a bird. You don't think of what you want, you think what you want to avoid. Or when you're thinking what you want to avoid, you also think about what you want. And you just go back and forth all the time. We can also get more specific than that. So with the second example, if you want to improve your trading performance, there are three broad ways that you can do that. You can open more profitable trades, you can open fewer losing trades, or you can do a combination of both of those two things, opening more profitable trades and fewer losing trades. Now, when traders look to improve their performance, they'll usually start by thinking, how can I open more profitable trades? But actually, the easier place to start is by thinking about how you can open fewer losing trades. And now we can use inversion, because rather than thinking about how you can open fewer losing trades, you can begin by thinking about how you would open more losing trades, and that's much easier. You know, perhaps you'd trade in the middle of an economic data release when the price is more volatile and unpredictable. Maybe you'd jump in randomly against a spike or a meltdown in the market, hoping it will reverse at that specific point in time, essentially trying to catch a falling knife. 
and so on. All of these factors that would lead to you losing a trade. Now, if you switch those back to the positive versions, you now have a list of things that would lead to more losing trades, which you can now try to avoid. This is the basis for creating your trading rules. You go deeper and deeper, thinking about what factors you're trying to avoid based on the inversion approach. And the final example is one that I use with our members and I recommend that you use it as well. When we're assessing a trading opportunity, we need to estimate the probability of that opportunity succeeding. It doesn't matter how great the risk reward ratio is, if you don't have an estimate of the probability, the success rate, you won't know if it has positive or negative expectancy and therefore whether it actually is an opportunity or not. Now, most traders do this implicitly without even realizing they're assessing the probability of the situation or perhaps they just focus on the risk reward and don't think about the probability. But you'll perform much better if you do start explicitly trying to figure this out and tracking your performance with it, seeing how close you were. The problem is though, where do you start? It's really difficult to determine if there is a high probability of something happening or a low probability. Now over time, once you have more data and more experience, you'll be able to judge it better based on that. But at the beginning, you don't have those reference points. So what can you do? So we can start with the inversion method. Ask yourself, what would lead to a low probability setup? It's a much easier way to think. What would cause an opportunity to have a higher likelihood of failing or just being less stable and less dependable in general? So for the Duomo method, that might include things like the level isn't confirmed correctly, therefore meaning there's a higher chance of human error, so less chance of the trade succeeding. It might be that the triad of price action is showing us we have herd activity through higher momentum and volume. It might be that the price has closed at its high without any wick, without any higher price, so it might have been just an arbitrary closing point on its way through that particular price point rather than it being failure there and so on, many other factors. But if those factors lead to a low probability opportunity, we now have a starting point to figure out other probabilities. Especially since we don't ever assess probability in isolation, we always look at it in comparison to other potential outcomes. You know, we don't really need an absolute probability figure, we just need a relative amount compared to what else may happen next. So by using the inversion method, we can rule out outcomes that don't match our requirements leaving us with the ones that do. Now to make all of this even more powerful, you could combine it with a flywheel approach, which will allow you to get better at it and better at it over time. The things that we measure can be worked on and improved. So make sure you document your decision making, review it, and then think how you can improve on it next time. And if you're not sure what a flywheel is or how it can be applied to your trading, click and watch this video next. Hit the like button if you found this interesting and if you made it this far, leave a comment below saying always invert. Thanks for watching. See you next time.